What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another episode of JTAG and RGH Tutorials, the updated series. So in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to get on Xbox Live, so you can actually play your games on Xbox Live and mod on Xbox Live with your JTAG and RGH console. Now this is going to be again quite a long video because these tutorials are targeted at people who have never done this before, so there's quite a lot that has to be explained for getting on Xbox Live. Unfortunately, for that reason, it's going to be a long video. If you want just a short, quick setup video, maybe watch one of XTX Solutions tutorials on this. Um, but yeah, so essentially what we're going to be doing is getting online. So there's a few things that need to be um, discussed here, first of all. So initially, what we need to do, as you can see here, my console is currently console banned. And that isn't too much of a big deal. Um, if you get console banned, you can unban yourself and get back on Xbox Live. But you will at some point get console banned. It's pretty much inevitable that you will get console banned at some point um, and you can unban yourself. So don't worry too much about getting a, getting a console ban because it's really not that much of a big deal. Um, so just bear that in mind. So back to the computer then. So we've got Xbox 360 Neighborhood. We're going to be using this to transfer all our files and edit our dash launch settings and basically do everything uh, with the console when we're on Xbox Live because we cannot run homebrew applications while we're connected to Xbox Live because that will get you banned faster. So you don't want to run any homebrew apps. So we're just going to use Neighborhood for everything. Um, then you're going to need a stealth server. So something like XB Online or Ninja. So a stealth server, basically when you try and connect to Xbox Live normally, you will get instantly banned because um, you know, the Xbox servers can detect when a modded console like a JTAG or an RGH is connecting to them and they'll just ban the console instantly. So a stealth server is kind of like a plugin that you put on your console and it spoofs the console's information um, so that when it when Xbox servers receive the connection from the console, it appears to them as if you're connecting on a normal console as if you're just connecting on a normal Xbox 360 and therefore it lets your console online. So that's pretty much what stealth servers do uh, in very basic terms. Um, and then you can see here I also have a key vault as well, a kv.bin. And this basically, this is the file that the that uh, Xbox, the Xbox servers basically ban. So when you get a console ban, it's this file that they're actually banning on your console. So in order to unban yourself, all you have to do is basically buy uh, another key vault, which will be taken from another console somewhere, um, which is not banned, and then put it on your console, on your hard drive, and your stealth server will take this key vault and spoof its information, uh, spoof your console's information to the key vault's information here, and you will no longer be banned. So essentially, you're just taking off the file that's been banned from your console, you're replacing it with this file and you can get back online. So again, these cost about, you know, from anything from about maybe three to five dollars now for a key vault. So they're not that expensive. Um, so yeah, in terms of stealth servers, this is where things get a bit more complicated. Uh, most stealth servers tend to cost money. So um, the kind of like, biggest well-known stealth server um, is Xbox Live Ninja. They've been around for the longest um, and you do have to pay if you want to use their service. So as you can see it's $6 for like a day, 24 hours. Uh, seven days is $20. A month is $75. So quite a bit of money um, and the advantage of you know going for a, a well-known stealth server like this is that one, you don't get console banned pretty much at all. It says here, KV's lasting over 20 months and counting. You can't always trust what these people put on their websites because they're trying to sell you something. But um, that is actually pretty accurate. Um, so you can last a hell of a long time without getting console banned if you use this service. But again, you're paying for the service. So it kind of depends how often you're going to use it. So, you know, you know, you might be paying $20 for seven days um, and you don't have to buy a key vault because it won't get banned within all those seven days. 
Or you could buy, you know, a crappy stealth server for one dollar a day, but you have, but you keep getting banned every day, so you have to buy a key vault every day, which costs an extra five dollars. So, you know, it's up to you. You make the choice on on what what you want to go for. The other advantage of going for a, a stealth service like this is that you, they come with, you know, added in extras like aimbot mod menus for all the Call of Duty games and stuff like that. So there is a benefit to going with them if you want to pay. Um, to to access this stuff. On the other hand, though, there are alternative options. So there's also Teapot Live and Rebellion Live, which are another two stealth servers that, um, as far as I know, have good lasting KV life, so you don't get banned uh, quite as soon. But again, there those services aren't quite as good um, or as reliable as Xbox Live Ninja. The other option, the one I would definitely recommend right now, is XB Online because it's basically like a, a paid-for service, but it's currently free. It's still in beta. It's been in beta for quite a long time now, for months. Um, so I don't know how long it's still going to be free for, but right now it's free, and you know it's basically like you're getting a premium stealth server for free instead of having to pay for it right now. So I would absolutely recommend using XB Online right now. Uh, and if XP Online does go paid in the future, again, it's still a very good stealth server that I'd recommend uh, using. So it's up to you. you. You make the decision which one you want to buy. There's also something called offline files, which are free, but they don't last long. You'll get console banned within a day, one or two days, or pretty much a day, sometimes as low as like six hours, and then you'll get banned. So you have to buy KVs all the time. So that's, you know, it's up to you. Do you want to have a free... Uh, do you want to get online for free but have to pay for KVs every day that you get banned? Or do you want to pay for like a premium stealth server like Ninja and, you know, pay $20 for a week and not have to worry about buying KVs because you won't get banned? That's kind of like, you know, the two sides of the coin. Although XB Online's kind of, uh, kind of, uh, you know, the best of both worlds. It's free and the KVs last for a long time. So definitely worthwhile going for this right now. Okay, so now we've cleared that stuff up. Let's get let's go on with actually setting this up and installing this. So first things first, we're going to open up uh, our console in neighborhood. So make sure you connect with the console's IP. I've Again, episode 7 shows you how to set up Neighborhood if you don't already have it set up. So we're going to go into our hard drive, our HDD1. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into XB Online. So it'll be a zip file you just extract. You get this folder here. I recommend reading the README for stealth servers because some have require slightly different settings, but normally they're pretty much the same. So inside the plugins list, We've got a bunch of different plugins here, which is a bit confusing, um, but really the only one we need is the actual stealth server plugin itself, which is xbonline.xex. That's the only one we need. So if it was Ninja, it would be called like ninja.xex or something like that. So all you have to do is basically take this xex file and drag it into the root of your hard drive. The other xex files that are in here, you don't really need to worry about. XBDM we already have, we already had that to get neighborhood working, and RPC and JRPC2, those are for connecting mod tools, which we'll, we'll be covering in other videos. So you don't really have to worry about installing those yet. All right, so now that we've got that set up, we've got XB Online on here, we now need to extract our launch.ini file, which is our configuration file for dash launch. Okay, so we extract this and double click it. it, should just open in Notepad. So we need to, first of all, go down to Paths and make sure down here where it says Default, make sure you have nothing in here. So I have Aurora set to my default dashboard so it will automatically boot into Aurora when I turn the console on. We don't want that when we're connecting to Xbox Live because if we run Homebrew, then we're going we're gonna to get banned faster. So we're not going to want that, so you're just going to get rid of that. So default should equal nothing. Then down in the plugins, you want to add the XB Online plugin that we just copied. So just rename, copy the name of it. And in plugin 2, underneath XBDM, we're going to put HDD colon 
backslash and then paste in the name of our plugin which is xbonline.xcx and then just go ahead and save the notepad document. Now XB Online requires that you keep live block on. So if we scroll down a bit further, we've got live block and live strong. So it's recommended that you keep these on when you're using XB Online because XB Online will automatically uh, like bypass them when you connect to Xbox Live successfully. That way, if you connect to it unsuccessfully, it will prevent you from connecting to Xbox Live and preventing your key vault from getting banned. So it's pretty useful. Um, but other stealth servers might require you to turn live block off. So definitely check the readme of your stealth server because some might require you to disable live block and live strong, in which case you just change true to false to turn it off. Simple as that. I want to leave it on though because I'm using XB online, so I'm just going to keep it out on true. So save the document once you're done and just drag it back on. So yes to all, we'll overwrite. Okay, so that's our stealth server set up. So the next thing, if again, if your console's not already banned, then you can just you restart your console and you should connect um, to Xbox Live. Simple as that. But because my console is already banned, I need a key vault. So you can get key vaults from instant-token.com. There's a bunch of other ones. This is a trusted site I've bought key vaults from many times. I've never been ripped off. I've always got the download. I've, I've tried other automatic um, KV sites where you can just buy them and it gives you a download and half the time uh, they don't work or they do, the download link is broken. So this one, I've not had issues with this one so far. So I'll link it in the description. There's also KV sellers on Facebook and stuff that you can contact to buy them maybe a bit cheaper for three or four dollars. But for me, the convenience is, is better with a website like this so that I can just buy it when I want to buy it. I don't have to wait for somebody to come online and message them. So I'll definitely link this in the description. Five dollars for a KV. So I bought one and the KV comes in a zip file. Just extract it. All that will be in there is the kv.bin and the cpu key.txt file. There might be a readme file or something in there as well, but the only ones you need are the kv and the cpu key. So you want to copy the kv into the root of the hard drive. Again, this is only if your console is already banned. Um, you don't need to do, you don't need to get a kv if it's not banned yet, but once it does get banned, then you'll need one. Um, and then the cpu key.txt file. We actually need to convert this into a bin file. So to do that, you want to open it up, copy the key that's in here. Then what you want to do is open a program like HXD or some kind of hex editor. I'll link HXD in the description as well. Uh, you want to click new or file new, and then just go ahead and paste the CPU key into the hex values. So don't paste it in here where the where it appears in the text string. You want to paste the key in here. So the key is actually in the bytes of the file rather than the text string. That's what you want. Then what you want to do is just do file, save as, save it to the desktop and call it CPU key dot bin. Make sure it's uh, spelt just like this, uppercase CPU, uppercase K, and then lowercase ey dot bin. Make sure type is all files and then save it. And then that should appear on your desktop. Okay, so there we go. Here's my CPU key dot bin. And I'm also gonna copy that into the root of the hard drive. So you don't necessarily need to put the CPU key in. Most stealth servers, if you don't provide a CPU key dot bin, it'll automatically like generate one for you. But because it won't be the correct one for that KV, um, chances are the KV life won't last as long as it would otherwise. So it is recommended to create the CPU key.bin, but just bear in mind it will work on its own without a CPU key.bin. All right, so that's all we need now. So all I have to do is restart my Xbox 360. Okay, guys, so here you go. As you can see, I have connected. And you can tell, obviously, that it's working because we've got a custom, like, notify message. It's all blue. This has actually changed since I last used it. This little circle thing in the middle is new. Ah, there we go. So, as you can see, 
I'm clearly connected to Xbox Live because you can see the advertisements showing up in here which wouldn't normally show up otherwise. So it has worked, I am connected to Xbox Live, everything is good, but I don't have an Xbox Live profile. And you'll probably find that you can't create an Xbox Live profile on the console on a JTAG or RGH. You might get lucky and it might work, but typically when you try and create a new account on the Xbox itself, you will get an error message, like an error code, and it will not let you create a new account. In order to get around this, you have to create the account on xbox.com and then download it on the console. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. But if you already know how to do that, then you know, you're know you good at this point. You've connected to Xbox Live. All right, so here we are. Let's go ahead and create a new account. So we, go, we head to xbox.com, click sign in. So this is the way that you have to do to basically bypass uh, the error code when you try and create an account on the console itself. Okay, so all you have to do is basically click no account, create one. So click create account. Then it'll say, you know, enter your email address, create a password. So personally, I just use 10 minute mail for this. Um, you could also maybe use something like Mailinator, some kind of disposable email system. Um, so I'm going to paste in my 10 minute mail address, create a password and click next. First name, we'll just do, just do James, James Johnson, very, very original name. Um, and then we'll go with some random year. Just make sure it's above 18. Click next and then it will send you a code to your email address. So this is why I use a disposable email system. Boom, there we go. So the code gets emailed. We just copy the code, paste it in, click next. Okay, so I had a couple of issues um, where it was asking me for phone verification and what my mobile number. After trying a couple more times, I got it to change to just doing like a capture verification and it, now it's not asking me for the phone number. So that's a bit weird. I'm not entirely sure what causes it to decide whether it's going to try and text you a verification code uh, when you create the account or whether whether it's just going to use a Capture code. Kind of weird. Not sure why it did that. Um, but I did get it to, to work without uh, requiring me to add a phone number. So yeah, not entirely sure what causes that. So I'm going to copy the email address. Just accept the terms and conditions and I should be able to then download this account on the Xbox. Yep, there we go. So there's the account. So I'm going to head over back to the Xbox and just go ahead and download this. Okay, so download profile, download, just enter the email address. So just enter the email address and the password and click done and it should start downloading your account. So hard drive to download the account to. So yeah, that's basically how you bypass uh, the whole error code when you try and create the account on the console itself. Just create the account with a 10 minute mail address or whatever on uh, your on xbox.com on your computer and then just download the account on the on the Xbox. And that is how you'll be able to bypass that. So there we go. Connected to Xbox Live. So we now have an, an online Xbox Live account on Xbox Live. Okay, so a few extra points before we end the video here. Um, if you want to play on Xbox Live, you don't necessarily need Xbox Live Gold. Um, for certain games, you do need Xbox Live Gold, but every stealth server, even offline files, will have gold spoofing. So gold spoofing basically makes it appear as though you have a gold membership even though you're on silver membership. So even though I'm on silver membership, I can still do stuff like create Xbox Live parties just like that. I can add friends, um, get them to join the parties. They can invite me to an Xbox Live party I can join. So normally you can't do that with Xbox Live Silver. Uh, you normally need Xbox Live Gold, but it spoofs gold for you. Now this doesn't necessarily work in all games. So certain games like Black Ops 3 or Black Ops 2, if I just head to retail hard drive, go to my games, I'll launch Black Ops 2 here. 
So Call of Duty Black Ops 2, find the default MP for multiplayer and double click. So that's how I'm going to launch my games when I'm on Xbox Live so that I don't use any homebrew applications. Um, that MP Black Ops 2 loaded, that's the bypass that's built into XP Online for the game to prevent me from getting in-game banned as well. So on here, because it's Black Ops 2, I can connect to Xbox Live um, and then just, boom, search for a public match and I should be able to find people no problem. Although it's actually half past one in the morning, so I'm not sure if I'm going to find very many people right now. Probably will find, yeah, okay, there's plenty. Well, well, a few. But as you can see, it's working. I can connect and I can find players online, even though I don't have Xbox Live Gold. Some games you will need gold for. Some games you will. So, um, like the Modern Warfare series of COD games, you need real gold. COD 4, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, you need real Xbox Live gold because gold spoofing will not let you find any players. It will just say, you know, zero games found every time you try and search for a match. So you have to be aware of that. Some games will work with gold spoofing, some won't. Um, so if you do have to end up buying gold, just bear in mind that JTAGs and RGHs are not region locked. So even though I live in the UK, I could download a US trial for Xbox Live Gold and redeem it on the console and it would work even though I'm not in that region. So you don't. So that is one thing. So you can get cheap codes if you look on eBay. Um, you know, you can get like a 48 hour trial for you know a dollar uh so it's it's not really that much of a big deal oh man really <laughs> it's a modded lobby what are the chances i'll just I, the first game i go into happens to be a modded lobby <laughs> what are the chances everyone's no clue okay <laughs> fair enough it's actually a hawkins zombie land game that's pretty cool yeah this this version of hawkins zombie lands fucked the black ops 2 version's fucked up because when you buy health you're supposed to keep the health that you bought even when you die, you should still have the health that you initially bought. So you can keep building up your health. Otherwise, people just keep killing themselves to get more money. And, yeah. And then they just buy all the upgrades at once, which kind of, like, breaks the whole game mode. And yet nobody's fixed that in... Nobody's fixed that in the Black Ops 2 version of Hawk and Zombieland. But, yeah, I'm rambling now because I wasn't expecting to be randomly put into a game of Hawk and Zombie Land when I was just randomly searching for a game. But yeah, anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. That is how you get on Xbox Live with your JTAG or RGH console. Hope you guys enjoyed it, found the information useful. If you did, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And I will see you guys in the next video.